welcome to The Stitch. And I'm Pam, we're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch, I get it, me, it's all me. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. <laughs> Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, our own projects, fun things that have been happening, classes we've taken. Um, things to prove our techniques and stories about our quilts. <gasps> Lots of stories. Our episodes come out monthly, complemented by virtual sew-ins and weekly podcasts. You can learn more about that at our website, thestitchtvshow.com. So, what are we doing today, Liz? Well, this is our 12th episode. So we've been doing this for a year. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Do you? No. Like, we've been doing this for a year. It seems weird. Yeah. So, we're doing a live broadcast. Well, it's live to tape. I think that's every, what they Well, technically, me. we're live for every episode. We've not yet done one dead. Just saying. <laughs> well, you're right. Just saying. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But I'm saying it's live in that we've got a live studio audience. We do. Which is unusual for us. Kind of thing. I'm making and weird, eye, awkward eye contact, eye contact with them right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> God, can you believe it? So, <laughs> what, we do, what we ask is that the people who showed up for our pattern launch today, because we launched our patterns, so be sure and check them out online. Um, Shop.thestitchtvshow.com. <laughs> Lynn might have jacked it up on some of our promo videos. Just saying, okay. That's exactly what I said on the other video. Shop. The, no, you well, didn't. No, you not. didn't. No. Okay, anyway, so, <laughs> so um, we asked people to give us questions on what they want to know from The Stitch. So we have some fans who actually watch our show. Or some random people them. that said, I like yeah. the YouTubes. Let me ask them about Pokemon Go. Yeah. We don't know what we're getting. <laughs> hey, there were some kids who killed some Pokemon. I don't or think you kill, kill it. You catch them. Oh, that's the different But game. there were six in the shop today. So you Six know, Pokemon or yeah. six kids? No, Pokemon. They got caught. Better not be Charmander. Just saying, that guy can get out of here. Okay. So, I, so we're kids. gonna draw questions, and then you and I are gonna answer. Yeah, them. and we're gonna answer all the questions. All the questions. First question. Oh gosh, is this for me or both of us? I don't. I think it's for both of us. What That's... type of thread and needle do you use for free motion quilting on a home machine? Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I, I don't do a home machine. I do a long arm. And she I just use... asked about like piecing too. It's not. She didn't say quilting or pee. Oh, quilting. So. Oh, I use whatever needle. I'm going to be in trouble for this. But I use whatever needles in my machine, which I think is normally a 90 or an 80. And I piece with Aerofill. 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 We've been through this. <laughs> we love you, Aerofill. Please sponsor us. <laughs> so, I apparently will never pronounce it right. But... But I don't do machine quilting like with true. You don't domestic. do it on your domestic. So when I piece and quilt on my domestic, I also use Aurifil traditionally. Uh, I try to branch out into specialty threads with varied success. My machine sometimes feels a little persnickety. Is it grumpy? It's not grumpy so much. It it's a it likes the Singer needles, not the Schmetz. I don't know why. That's I can't weird. I know it's weird. I can't tell the difference. Because I I think I always use Schmetz needles. Yeah. I can use Schmetz for piecing. And I usually use a size 80, but when I try to use it for quilting, I get skip stitches. Mm, that's so, not good. There you go. Yeah. All right, next All question. Right. <gasps> if you are ever to have guests on the stitch, who are some of your dream guests? Oh, I don't know. Like, I, would want I think it would be fun to have, I love Mickey Dupree. Like I loved yeah. her class, I thought she was a great teacher. Diane Heyer would have been great. I was going to say Diane Heyer. Diane Heyer would have been, she was just so fun to take a class from. Um, Bonnie Hunter was fun. We oh, just yeah. had a class with Bonnie Hunter. Thank you for um, the shout out, Bonnie. You know, those. I think I'd like to pick Gwen Marston's brain. Hmm. She's just an amazing uh, improvisational quilter. I'd like to pick her brain. I want to talk to Angela Walters. Oh, yeah. Oh, Judy Madsen. We've already talked to Judy Matt. She's not been on the show. She's not been on the show, but I'd love her to be on the show. She's yeah. fun. So there you go. That's my rock stars. Those are rock stars. You know, stars. honestly, I would love to just bring on everyday quilters. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of our friends are just great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. We would, you know, I think we could have guests. Awkwardly but, looking around the room. But, but our <laughs> studio is so small. Maybe we'll have guests on another. Like, so nobody we need can fit very in our thin studio. Guests. Yeah, thin. <laughs> I mean, sit right between us. Well, we have more chairs. We just don't really have. Yeah, we don't have space. Yeah, it's tight. 
So we could probably fit one of my cats in there. All right, I'm going to ask the Okay, next you question. do the next one. Uh, Pam and Lynn, who's your favorite fabric designer and why? Hmm. I don't know. I like a lot of basic gray stuff. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Um, I like uh, peppercorn shock cottons. Yeah. I like Kaif, but I, I like don't Kaif. have the confidence to put it together correctly. Oh, no, and it I adventures. throw some oh, yeah. and some stuff. I try, and then it always sticks out to me. And I Yeah, no, I like Kaif. Yeah, I think those are the ones I can think of off the top of I, my head. I do so much with Scrappy that it's, it's hard to say, ooh, I like that one. Like, whoever designed the Star Wars fabric, you got game. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with that? I don't know, Star Wars fabric. <laughs> you go, George Lucas. Yes. <laughs> You should. But you know, so the, at least the Star Wars fabric had Ray on it. Yeah. Because there was a big controversy that all the Star Wars toys and stuff didn't have the main character, but the fabric or, lines did. So or if like, it did, it was like, scavenger. Yeah. And she had a mask on. And they're like, we didn't want to give it away. I'm like, well, don't put a lightsaber in her hand. She's yeah. still on the poster for the movie. Exactly. So anyway. anyway. All right. All next. Right, my turn? Yes. Again? I get two turns. Who is the target demo for the pattern line? And how do we hope to evolve the pattern line over time? The target demo is quilters. <laughs> <laughs> do you sew? Because that would be good. <laughs> so I think, you know, what we've seen in our experience in being involved in a modern quilt guild and being involved in a much larger, more established quilt guild. Yeah, more traditional. The modern guild, when we look at average age from a national organization, that is a younger demo. Um, when we look at our particular chapter, I don't know that we have that because we have such a range of age of members yeah. that it's impossible to tell. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that we're targeting modern people who make modern quilts. We're targeting modern, modern quilters yeah. who are not afraid to take advantage of tools and try new techniques. Right. Um, and you can see with our quilts, like this, it's curved piecing. A lot of quilters don't want to tackle curved piecing, but we're trying to be the friend that brings them along on this journey. Right, I agree. So we're targeting, I would say, um, we're, not, we're not the Judy Niemeyer, so we're not the complicated paper piecing at this point. She's not the Juju meme. I, I like complicated. Oh, I could do it, but that's yeah. not what we're designing right now. No, right now. I mean, we're, we're trying to bring newer quilters along. So whatever age demo that, that group of newer quilters comes into, Yeah. I would say that. Now, from our personal reference, our three quilt patterns that launched today were inspired by 80s music in movies. Because that's what we love. Because that's how we grew up. Yeah, now, that's exactly. not to say that there's not some plans for some 70s stuff and even some 60s and 90s. further back and 90s. 90s and whatever inspires us. Yeah. So I, it's going to be, you know, I want to do a pirate quilt. Draw. I decided yesterday. I want to do a pirate quilt. Are you going to tell them No. <laughs> I got to save that. I can't tell everybody everything. Okay. I want to do a pirate quilt. That'll okay. be fun. And we can release it on Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> Yarg. Yarg. That would be great. September 19th, Talk Like a Pirate Day. And it's sad that I know that. Just saying. You probably have a Facebook the event. I'm going to ask the question. Because I'm done talking about Oh, we that. didn't talk about how it's evolving over time. Um, as we do more quilts, it evolves. It gets bigger. There you go. We'll add more. Like a Pokemon, it evolves. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if we can figure out how you can chase it down and, like, capture it, it'll be fun. Um, will you ever do more than one episode a month? <gasps> That's an amazing question <laughs> that I happened to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to make sure we made an announcement. The announcement is, yes. we are now, <laughs> after this episode, this will be the last episode in our um, season one. In, season one. <laughs> so season two, we're going to two episodes a month. So we'll be releasing them every other week. And um, so it's exciting. Well, twice a month. Every other week you get into weird calendar times. Right, it's so. twice a month. But uh, so how about the release, really. Yeah, she's They not. let me show up. But she <laughs> shows up and looks good. Uh, what we're doing is, right now, with our, well, except for this show, we tend to do three segments with some talky talk up front. Talky talk. But the talky talk has kind of expanded to be more than like a minute. Hey, how's it going? Great. Let's move on. It's talky talk. So that's a whole other segment. So in an effort to be considerate of people's time, 
when our episodes have been. people won't uh, watch us for an hour? Oh, I'm sure We're they hilarious. would. But we want to be respectful of their data usage and download limits okay, and all that good true. stuff. So yeah. um, what we're going to end up doing is individual shows will be down to two topics, but with that third segment up front where we talk about current events and things that are happening. Yeah. But doing that allows us to film everything on one day, both episodes, and then release them. Uh, they will probably come out standard Friday, so last Friday of the month. Last Friday of the month. And then the Friday two weeks before that, which is typically when we host our virtual sew-in. Yay. Hooray. And if you don't join our virtual sew-in, it's fun. Well, join or even just watch, because lots of people get camera shy. They're like, I don't want to be on YouTube, which I totally get. I'm not sure I want to be on YouTube, but it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to tell you. Oops. We're already there. I'm just going to keep drawing. Keep drawing. You... Well, I want to keep Okay, you go. to do one. Okay. All right. <gasps> this one's for me. Pam. What is your favorite color to work with in quilts? Lynn, we already know you love orange. Yeah, but it's, well, I do work with orange a lot. So what you is do. your favorite color? I could tell you. No, but ahead. except I have two favorite colors. Brown and teal. It's not brown. She uses brown in every It's purple. Color. Oh, purple. I just don't have enough purple in my stash to work You know, there was a time where fabric companies didn't make a lot of purple. So well, that's because why the dye people was don't expensive. have those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why there's not a lot of purple. So I've done... A Couple teal and purple quilts, amazingly. Yeah. I'm branching out. I just tend to stay in the cooler color zone, so the blues, the greens, the teals, purple where I can find it. Yeah. I like the oranges, the reds, the yellows. That's why we but work. yellow's becoming really popular. Well, you keep making quilts with yellow, and people keep saying, that's a good yellow quilt. I'm about to yellow fabric. Exactly. It's because yellow is cool. Yellow is cool. All right. All right, now you can draw. Is it my turn again? Yes. Okay. So. How do you do binding when it doesn't have a true right angle? Are you asking me or are you going to answer? I have no idea. So go ahead. You don't know. I, I just treat it like it's an angle. So the only time where it gets tricky because on I attach my binding with a quarter inch foot. And my quarter inch two. foot has a marking so I know when I'm a quarter inch from the needle. So when it's a 90 degree angle, you know, stop when the edge of your fabric or your quilt sandwich gets to that line that's a quarter inch ahead of the needle. Now, where it gets tricky is when it's not a 90 degree angle, say, for example, on a hexagon shaped quilt. Right. You got to kind of wing it. You got to just, I eyeball it because. Because that's what Because do. babies don't care. We've established that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they don't. They just don't. I think they don't. Yeah. So I, I do my best guess. Now, I could, if it were for a show, I would mark it. What's a quarter inch in and I would know, like, okay, stop it. But instead of that mitered border that's 90 degrees, it's just a slightly different angle. Now, I will say, I, I don't do that very often, but I will say if I were to do it, I would use bias binding. That does make it easier. It's a little more forgiving. It totally will make it easier and give you more forgiving because bias gives you that stretch that you don't have with straight binding. Although I hate cutting bias binding because in my head, I'm wasting fabric. I'm not, but in my head I am, so it drives me nuts. Yeah, it drives me nuts too. So not just me, it drives you out. Oh, That's crazy. It's your turn. My turn. Okay. Next question. Pam and Lynn. <laughs> okay. I immediately went to the wrong place for this, and I will tell you why in a minute. Uh, <laughs> describe your ideal or ultimate fantasy quilt retreat. Ooh, ultimate fantasy quilt retreat? Um, Some place where you are, like, on a lake or something where you can see water, because I like that. Um... Lots of space for design walls. Design walls are important when you're at a retreat. So it's not just one person, one design wall for all a bunch of people. Uh, enough irons, enough sewing machines, where I can stay up all night because I'm a late night sewer and other people are early morning sewers. I will be a 6 a.m. sewer oh, in bed no. by 10. No, 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 no. I stay up till 2. So I know. Like, when we've gone on retreats, I shut it down at night. I'll be in there by myself for an hour and... She'll be up I opened up. and she opens it up. <laughs> we see each other about 10 o'clock in the morning. So. <laughs> so. so when I read this, I immediately thought of Miss Congeniality, movie with Sandra Bullock, where they <laughs> asked the contestant, like, what's your ideal date? And she's like, April 25th, because it's not too hot and you can get away with a light jacket. <laughs> That's where I thought that was going. So our ideal quilt retreat could be on April 25th. Okay, or that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> April 25th. Let's just pull that out. Is it my turn? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Lynn, why and how did you get into appraising quilts? Uh, I love history, which is probably the biggest reason. 
And someone showed up at a quilt guild meeting who was a certified quilt appraiser and started talking about it. And at that time, I didn't have real confidence in my own quilting abilities. And I thought, oh, I could do that. I could be an appraiser. <laughs> if I can't get into shows, I can at least appraise stuff. So uh, that's kind of, and I got fascinated by the whole idea that there are appraisers out there. So I immediately that year signed up for Paducah and went to quilt. Uh, the classes in Paducah and start taking classes. Now, it is a long process. If you haven't done appraisal track, it took me, I think, four or five years to get it done and be officially certified, tested, all that kind of stuff. So it's, but if you're interested in history, which is a big deal, um, that's kind of a, where I go with it. Cool. There you go. All right. Next. <gasps> Who did the awesome catering for the lunch party? <gasps> The awesome catering was done by Cafe 33 in Marietta, Georgia, and it was incredible. It's incredible. So they do breakfast, lunch, and I think dinner now. Yeah, soon, soon to have dinner. Yes. Uh, but they, it's awesome food. Um, we eat there quite often. Oh, yeah. It's very yeah. convenient to a quilt shop if you yes. are road tripping through Atlanta. There you go. Check it out. Just very, very tasty. Excellent food. Okay. Next question. Um, how much do you love the Hansons? <laughs> Those are friends of ours, and they were here, and I love them a lot. You probably don't know them very well, um, but they're awesome. But people. I do have Mbop on my playlist regularly, <laughs> and I'm just saying, <laughs> my kids love it. We will do a living room dance party. So, do yes, Mbop? I also love the Hansons. I'm sure this is from Josh. So. No, I believe this one's from Josh, oh, because it says from Josh. From he says, sup, dog, how you living? <laughs> we're great. I think we're good. I think so, we're doing good. Thanks, Josh. I'm going to make Congratulations sure you... on your Pokemon, Josh. Yes, exactly. I think he's the one who caught six Pokemon today. I hope so. No, there you go. It wasn't me. It wasn't me either. <laughs> um, oh, this is a good question. During creative process, when do you know when to quit? Like, how do you know when it's done? When I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> when you're tired. Yeah. I think that's a hard question. So is that in designing or is that in that actual construction? Or designing. Is it, okay. I'm going to so say design. Original design. Original design. When you know when it's done. I like to follow Tim Gunn's advice. It, which and it may not be his. It may be Coco it's Chanel. Just, it's, just, it's like put on everything you think you're going to go out of the house in and then take off one thing. Oh, yeah. I've heard that before. See, I made you take off your bracelet before she, we started she, filming. She made me take off my bracelet. See? That's just because you didn't want to clink it. Well, that's all. true. So, it did. But I, good. so if I were designing an original quilt, like if you're following a pattern, you stop when you run out of fabric, you know, I'm yeah. done. Cut done. all the pieces. 280 half square triangles. Yeah, but when I'm designing an original, do so like, like. How'd you know when this one was done? Um, I, well. It was big enough. It was, yeah, I didn't have <laughs> any more fabric. <laughs> that's how it happened. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, ooh, wouldn't this be fun? And then I started cutting blocks and I went, well, that's about enough. <laughs> and, then, and this drives our pattern editor crazy. And then I went, oh, maybe I should do some piano keyboarders. And I put those on. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I designed differently. But, like, in the time after time, I did the flower. And when, after I put the three little dots on the edge, I went, that looks good. And I'm done. I think it's just that last accent piece. Yeah. You gotta, I don't know, it's maybe it's a feel kind of thing. Like, it looks good. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, because I'm a little more regimented about. Yeah, a little? <laughs> Mitch. A little? Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah. Peanut gallery making comments. <laughs> <laughs> when Yay. I run out of rows in my spreadsheet, I know I'm done. Uh, <laughs> No, because you a lot of... You do not know how true that is. That's like, true. she has total spreadsheets. Oh, but with Excel 10, it's like a bajillion more rows. So look out. That scares Damn. me. I bet <laughs> she's, like, she's already planned out all our patterns. And I'm like, I, I don't... I got to get through this month. Like, I got to get through Thursday. I don't know I was just getting through today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so... So you know I... When you well, I tend to know, like, oh, I'm making a lap size quilt. It should be about this big. So, right. so mine is very much driven by the constructs and not, oh, I'm going to make a quilt that's eight inches wide and 72 inches long. <laughs> I'm like, no, it needs to have some proportion. And Right. I, I, well, I think I, it's a feel for me. I, it's yeah. like, oh, it looks done. 
All right, that's okay. mine. Oh, we have two left. Two left. These are better be the best questions ever. What's up, dog? Oh my gosh, it's a hard question. I, I really think it is. What is modern quilting? Did you write this? Only because someone told me to. Okay. But yes, it's my handwriting. It is her handwriting. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a legitimate definition from the modern, the National Modern Quilt Guild Organization, which yeah. is very much about aesthetics. When I think of modern quilting, I see it much more from the mindset of the demo that we talked about, which is people that are willing to be adventurous, to try new things. Right. Um, ideally, I hope that they are willing to grow their skills. I think because the definition of modern quilting by the National Guild, to me, is quite narrow. Oh, it's definitely a certain aesthetic. I mean, if you yeah. think of mid-century modern in the art world, that's the aesthetic that the Modern Quilt Guild kind of leans towards, that they would identify as modern quilts. It's negative space, it's bright colors, it's using solids. Um, those are all part of what their definition is. I, you know, I think you could make an argument that modern quilting is a new generation of quilters mm -hmm. and their approach to what quilting is. and. And taking quilting from maybe a traditional, I don't know, uh, perspective of what quilting was 50 years ago to, you know, the new online social media. I think that's very much a part of modern quilting. I mean, I think I consider myself a modern quilter, but I don't necessarily do modern quilt, right. mid-century modern art patterns, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. I think, I don't I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. I love art quilts. I love modern. I love traditional. I don't like English paper piecing. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. And I've already gotten in trouble from that on another episode, but oh. I don't like it. Mm. 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 All right. I get the last question. The last question. I think that one was hard. <gasps> I wrote this one. It's a good you? question. Oh. What is your 80-est? 80-est? Your 80s-est memory. It like 80s. What, when you think back to your life in the 1980s and oh you think gosh. of pop culture of the time, then let me tell you mine. Maybe okay, that'll inspire good, you. Okay, good, because I'm like, I don't know. So I was in eighth grade. You already know it's going good places here. <laughs> but it was really just a lovely time in my life. Uh, and I was in the dollar store, because those were new at the time. And my mom had, oh, had, had drugged, oh, okay, the dollar the store. Dollar store. We used to do price checks at the dollar store. I know. Dad I yeah. thought that. I always thought that was yeah. hilarious. So we're standing there in the dollar store, and they have like the jewelry section and like the weird off-brand shampoo section, and yeah. So I'm standing there in front of the wall of socks. <laughs> and in the '80s, socks were a big deal, and you would wear up to three pairs at a time and hope you didn't cut off circulation in your feet. <laughs> I never wore three pairs of socks. Oh my gosh, I totally did. Okay. And I said to my mother at age 13, being a very unpopular nerd who had hate notes shoved in my locker and wet goldfish crackers in my math book, Mom, if I could just get the right pair of socks, my life would be so much better. <laughs> I bought an electric yellow pair of socks. They were acrylic. My feet sweated so much. Oh, those are, They totally clashed with my socks. pastel oh. high tops. My life did not significantly improve from those socks, but that statement to me was like that. That's the superficiality of the 80s, the layer of the socks, the dollar store, <laughs> the desperation <laughs> to be popular. <laughs> that was my 80s. Did you, know, I don't, did, you, I, did you wear big shoulder pads? Tell me about your oh, red yes. leather jacket. I did have a red leather <laughs> jacket. She made fun of, like, when we filmed the commercials for the stitch patterns, she, like, came in her jean jacket and everything. I was like, I don't have anything from the 80s, I think, that I kept. Except for, I think I had these... It was like dynasty shoulders. You know how they had the shoulder pads and they were like, it looked like you could be a linebacker or something. <laughs> so. Well, you had to, to take out Joan Crawford. Yeah. She wouldn't take it no crap from nobody. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know that I have a specific. All right. I had a I just mostly jacket. wanted to tell my sock story, so, you know. <laughs> I like your sock story. <laughs> and we used to do price checks in the dollar oh, store yeah. too. You know, you'd stand up in the dollar store and go, price check, and then everybody would go, it's a dollar! And that totally cracked me up for some reason. You and my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Little things in life make me happy. So, we're out of questions. We're out of questions. Uh, technical note. Technical note. Uh, thingy has popped up on the camera, and we can't see the teleprompter. Well, that's addressed. We're going to draw the winner of the free patterns from the shop. Ta-da! So uh, we had uh, the Red Hen Fabrics, where our show is being 
uh, filmed today, and our launch party was earlier. Yay! Uh, kindly offered three of our patterns. Uh, and so we are going to draw the winners. So first up, Stripper's Knot, which is the one behind us. Dun, 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 dun. The winner is Brenda Burke. Is Brenda in the audience? Oh. No? No? Oh? Know that Someone knows who that is. Okay. Yes. So she wins Stripper's Knot. Stripper's Knot. So next up is the Time After Time Table Runner. That is Karen Mellon. Woohoo. And then finally, we have the Belinda Giant Hexi Quilt. And that winner is... Ella Herrera, who is in our guild. Yay, Ella. Yay, Ella. All righty. All so right. that wraps us up for today. Awkward eye contact <laughs> <laughs> ensuing. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Can we fix that? Can that quilt out? I, th I that think that'll quilt out. I think that'll, that'll quilt, quilt out. out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So, <laughs> this was fun. It was Very fun. excited to have a live audience. Thank you guys for coming, even though it was storming and raining. <sighs> We're almost there. <laughs> so, we will be back soon. Yes. This, <laughs> <laughs> this month was brought to you by 77 Peaches Enterprises, your one-stop shop for creative support. And... And we've already drawn the winners. Hooray. So... And... We're waiting, we're waiting. It's scrolling, it's scrolling. We uh, we'd go. like to thank 77 Peaches, Red Hen Fabrics, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studio, and Hip to Be a Square for being a part of Stitch. You can find links to their sites on our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. And we can't wait to, where's the Google Hangout? <gasps> the Google Hangout. Oh, oh gosh. that's all we've got for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we are professional. <laughs> Please like the show on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and share it with your friends. Remember that our next virtual sew-in will be sometime in August because we forgot to update the date in our teleprompter. We look forward to seeing you from 7 to 9 p.m. U.S. Eastern on whatever that date is. We'll post it on Facebook. My podcast, Tip to Be a Square, will be out every Friday. You can email us while Lynn laughs her full head off with questions or comments at info at thestitchtvshow.com. All these details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next month for more quilting chat with friends, and we're going to need a tissue for Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we're done. Oh, my God. I don't know what happened. Not usually that no, rocky. Honestly, honestly, we have left that hard. <laughs> yeah.